Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to discuss a very important topic with Gentoo, which is how to create a custom eBuild repository locally on your own machine. Now this particular video is going to follow the Gentoo Wiki's tutorial on how to do this fairly closely. I will link to this tutorial down in the description of the video so you can go and check it out if you want to follow along that way. And the reason I want to do this is because I'm hoping to actually in the future, actually in the very short term future, create a video on how to make your own e-builds for your own programs. And so I would like to get out the information on how to create a custom repository that you could put these e-builds into before I get to that video. Okay, to begin with, what I'm intending to do in this video is demonstrate how you can create your own e-build repository. Now, an e-build repository is just a location on your computer that is going to store e-builds, that is, files that contain descriptions for how to install and manage programs that Portage will use to install and manage programs for you. Now, on a fresh install of Gentoo, you will have access to the Gentoo tree, the, the default Gentoo repository. And if you watch my video on Layman that I put out a few weeks ago, I demonstrated how to put in overlays, how to install overlays on your system. And overlays are remote eBuild repositories that you can use to install third-party programs on Gentoo. In this video, we're actually going to create a eBuild repository in the directory structure of our local machine so that we can install custom eBuilds that we make ourselves or that we find online. Okay, the first step is to navigate to the directory var var db. Let's ls this out. Now Gentoo uses this var db directory to store its own repositories in the most recent versions. And it's here that we'll want to put our own eBuild repository. Now to start with what we want to do is we want to create a directory structure to store our eBuild repository. So we'll want to do sudo mkdir make directory with the dash p option to, to create parents if they don't already exist. And then we want to create that in the repos directory here. That directory may not already exist for you, but if it doesn't, just go ahead and create it. And in fact, this command will create it. And then a directory that contains the name of the repository, we're going to call it custom1. And then inside that, we want to create two directories. The first one called metadata and the second one called profiles. Okay, so those directories have been created. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to change the ownership of those directories. So we'll want to do sudo chone-r to recursively change ownership, user portage group portage, and then in repos, custom1. Make sure that you select the actual directory here and not the contents of the directory. Okay, we can change directory into repos, custom1 now. And let's head out and see that everything belongs to portage portage. And that, of course, our two directories have been created. So now we have the layout, the structure that we need in order to create our own eBuild repository. So the next step will be to get to that. Okay, next we're going to have to create and edit some files. Now the first one that we're going to have to make is a file in the profile subdirectory here under var db repos custom one, that being our repo name. It'll be under profiles and it will be called repo underscore name. Now this is a very simple file and the only thing that has to be in here is a single line that contains the name of the repo. We chose to name our repo custom one. So we do that and then we just save changes and we're done. The next file that we'll have to create is going to be in the metadata directory and it's going to be called layout.conf, conf, config. So we'll edit that. And we're going to have to actually add two lines here. The first is going to be masters equals gen2. And the second is going to be auto sync equals false. Now what we're saying here is that the master of our custom repository is going to be Gentoo's default repositories. And we're going to say that it is not going to automatically sync with a remote web server for update purposes because it's located entirely on our own local machine. And with that done, we'll just write changes and exit. The last file we have to create is actually going to be a portage configuration file. And it is located in Etsy portage repos dot conf and it needs to be called the name of our repository dot conf so custom one dot conf so let's edit that all right now this file needs to contain 
first a square bracket followed by the name of the repository itself. Ours was custom one, then a closing square bracket, and then on the next line the word location equals followed by the directory that contains the repository. Var db repos and then custom one. Remember not to end this with a forward slash since we're talking about the actual directory that contains our whole repository here. This will inform Portage where our custom repository is located so that it can find it whenever it needs it in an emerge command. So write changes and we're done with that. Okay, that's great. Now we've got our repository created, but there's currently no packages available in it because we've not put any in there. This, as I said, is a repository that's located entirely on the local machine, so there's not going to be any packages in it unless you put them there. So to quickly demonstrate how that's done, we'll actually be using the package that the Gentoo Wiki uses as a demonstration on its own tutorial on how to create a custom repository, and it's called Artha, and it's actually a dictionary. Now this package, Artha, is not included in Gentoo's default repositories. To demonstrate, we can emerge dash p to simulate Artha, which is the package name, and you can see that Emerge says there are no ebuilds that satisfy Artha, meaning that there are no packages in Gentoo's default repositories that correspond with this Artha package, this Artha dictionary. So let's add it ourselves. Let's put it in our own custom repository so that we can install it ourselves. Now the first thing that we'll actually want to do is we'll want to create a category and package directory for this ebuild that we're going to create to be stored in. So let's mkdir make directory dash p again to create parents and and then we're still located in the var db repos custom one directory. So we're in the directory that contains our local repository. So first we'll want to create a category name app dicts for dictionaries forward slash artha. And as you can see, this created a category app dictionaries that we can go into and a directory to contain our package called artha, which is of course empty right now. Now one issue that you have here, as you can see, we're back in the repos custom one directory, is that this new structure that we just created belongs to root root because we ran it with sudo. So to fix that, we're going to have to chone again. Once again, recursively, user portage, group portage, and then the name of that directory. Now as you can see, it belongs to portage, and its contents also belong to portage. So we're good to go now. Okay, the next step is to actually get the Artha ebuild and put it in that Artha directory that we created. So this start, this ebuild is actually available from Gentoo's website. This is what it looks like. And I've gotten the URL for this here, so we can actually use wget to get this and put it in that directory. So let's cd to the Artha directory. As you can see right now, it's empty. And let's run sudo wget and then this URL that I've copied and then dash capital O for output file and we actually have a specific name that we need to give this. First, we need to give it the name of the package, Artha, followed by a hyphen and then the version number, which I know is 1.0.2, but you'll want to check the version for whatever ebuild you're trying to install yourself if it's not this particular one. And then dot ebuild. This is the specific name that the ebuild file has to have in order for Portage to be able to deal with it. So let's run that. And we've got it downloaded. And as you can see here, there's our Artha ebuild, and we can cat it out, and it looks like it should. Now the last step is going to be to run repo man in this Artha subdirectory. Now if you don't have repo man installed yet, you'll want to install it with emerge app portage repo man, but I already have it installed, so I'm ready to go ahead and use it. We'll want to do sudo repo man manifest and run it. Okay, and once that's done, it will have created for you a manifest file, which we can see here. Manifest. We can cat that out. Now, this manifest is used by Portage as part of the installation process of any particular package. And using Repo Man, we can create one for any package that we add here to our custom repository. Now, I notice one last thing that we have to do before we move on. Artha ebuild still belongs to root. So we'll want to chone that to Portage. Portage. All right, and with that, we're good to go. We can now actually try to install Artha. So let's do emerge 
dash p app d i c t s artha. All right, and as you can see, our eBuild works because Emerge has generated us a package and a list of dependencies that it will need to install this Artha package. And as you can see, app dix Artha is coming from custom one repo, which is our own local repository. So we've done it. We've created a local eBuild repository here on our own machine, populated it with an eBuild of our own, prepared that eBuild for portage, and now we have successfully even emerged, or we would have if I hadn't run the dash P option, this package that we've added to our own custom repository. And you can do this for any packages that you want, even using eBuilds that you write yourself. And that about does it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Like I said, this video followed the tutorial that is on the Gentoo Wiki very closely. And that was mostly just for the purposes of getting everybody on the same page because later on in the week I'm hoping to upload a video that will go over writing your own eBuilds for programs that you find the source code of online or perhaps even that you've written yourself and then adding those to your own custom repository so that you can install them on your system or even other people can install them on your system if it has a Git URI or something like that. But uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.